I'm Josh Barrow, host of Left, Right, and Center, KCRW's weekly forum for civilized debate across the political spectrum. Today's news cycle demands more time for deeper analysis. So Left, Right, and Center is now a full hour every week. Subscribe and listen at kcrw.com slash LRC. This episode of The Treatment contains explicit content. Listener discretion is advised. On To The Point, we try to make sense of the policy debates and the political sideshows on the campaign trail. You have this kind of asymmetrical warfare coming from a guy who's great at a soundbite, lousy at an answer. So are you looking for your own billionaire? No, no, I don't want my own billionaire. I'm going to raise the vast majority of the money. Brace yourself, America, for what? King Trump. (laughs) I'm Warren Olney. To The Point has you covered for the 2016 campaign. Find the To The Point podcast on KCRW's iTunes page. From KCRW Santa Monica and KCRW.com, it's The Treatment. Welcome to The Treatment. I'm Elvis Mitchell. My guest, Tyler Creator, once said he's a walking contradiction. I like to think of that old line from the Walt Whitman poem, sung myself, I am large, I contain multitudes. That's more your speed, isn't it? Uh, Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we know him as a composer, as a guy who's been influenced to go from Stevie Wonder to Gabrielle Duckworth. For his last album, Cherry Bomb, had all the W's, Leon Ware, Charlie Wilson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Pharrell Williams, Kanye West. But he's here to talk about his new line of clothes, Golf Wang. Because I figure if you can have polo, why not have golf, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. A hundred percent. Is that kind of where it came from a little bit? Uh, nah. It's, our, our crew is called Wolfgang, and then... On one day on Photoshop, I just switched the W and the G, and it turned into golf wing. And symmetrically, golf looked awesome <laughs> on things. And I kind of just would rep golf wing. And then I was like, uh, we was doing the OF, the I Future uh, merch stuff. I was just like, damn, you know, I'm gonna finally just do my clothing line that I always wanted to do. And then 2011, I started doing the golf wing thing just separately. And it's been my baby ever since. Because I always thought it was being like a clothing line and not a fashion line. Like, this is really just about clothes and what you feel like wearing when you feel like wearing it, right? I mean, it's a, I wouldn't, it's a clothing line, but like, you know, do sh- furniture and it's, it's, it's Yeah, it's, it's we a, saw the, in the show, you had the Lifestyle, well, yeah. I think people would consider that lifestyle. Okay, yeah, because you had the Coke can chairs in the show the other day. Yeah, and the table and the backpack walk-in closet and the sink and all the freaking sheets and pillows and rugs and toothbrushes and you know all that everything you just want to put the whole lifestyle thing together for people then right that's what the line is for you i mean yeah i i want to make stuff i want to put my twist on everything in the world possible because well i was just telling just before we sat down when i saw the colors the first thing i thought about was the old uh billionaire boys club ice cream line because those colors pop in the same way well you know that came out when i was you know 13 well they started that when i was 12 but it it didn't really start getting there until i was 13 it's 2004 and you know i mean p's my fucking dad hero idol you know the the only male figure i had growing up yeah so i've i've my my first love for clothes started because of Bape and what Nigo and P did and things like that. So, <clears throat> you know, me, just my love for that. If you're intelligent, you will be able to see, you know, some of the, the um, I wouldn't even say inspiration, but you know where I, I came from. Yeah, because look at the shoes. I can't help but think about Bape when I see the shoes. You know, it's mm-hmm. almost like the same line in the shoes, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, I kind of I only wear Vans. And I lo- I like Babe, and then I used to love Puma Clydes and stuff, and so I it, the shoes so far just as the first sample is just a mixture of a, a bunch of different and a shoes. Because like, I have some like lilac Clydes from like two thousand four mm-hmm. that I got, and this lilac is a big uh, sort of lilac and pink and yellows, and, mm-hmm. and those are all to me kind of again like BBC colors. I mean, I wouldn't really say that. I guess they brought it to a. Uh, I don't want. I hate the word urban. That's just a politically correct way to say nigger. But uh, <laughs> they brought it to. I guess. I guess that stuff kind of brought more colors that black people weren't really wearing. 
or the the black youth weren't really into, and then they made that cool. But you know, it's you know, Chucks had crazy colors. Vans, some of Vans' first shoes were blue, and then the yellow and reds and things like that. And if you even go back to old school polo, a lot of that stuff is yellow. I mean, yeah, they've had all colors. You know, not trying to discredit you know the lines I love, but then niggas didn't really start the colors, but they they did bring it to an audience and make it crack open a door to make it okay slowly and surely for blacks to black youth to do that stuff at that time because that shit is it wasn't cool it's still a couple things that's not even cool which sucks like what do you mean what are you thinking i mean i have a lot of white friends and stuff so like just me saying hi to people and i hug people and stuff like that's not like the like black dudes don't do that (laughs) they want to you know they don't nah i mean i don't know maybe maybe your generation but like hugs is weird and like telling your friends you love them and appreciate them sometimes is weird. Like, like uh, the the code word for that is like, oh, that's my nigga. Like gang, gang. We're like just flat out saying, oh, I love you, bro. Like I appreciate you so much. Is like, it's a lot of things that's weird with with uh, with our with our generation with certain things like that. Well, that's especially all- growing up, it was weird. Well, but you feel like it seems like to me everything you do is kind of like just your way of saying there's more than one way to do everything. Yeah, of course. It's the, and then like they, they trick they trick you to follow, you know. Just as humans, we we don't like being alone. So you you slowly just follow, start following the things that go. And after a while, your brain is just tricked into thinking that this is the only way to do certain things because that's all you know. And sometimes I feel like our our culture, you're not meant to explore. You're not meant to be weird and see what's that and be curious and see what what this is like and things like that. So. You kind of only know one way of certain things, and I've always just never wanted to think it was one way of looking at things and trying things, and that's I guess, why I'm here. No, no, I, I feel that, because one of the reasons I just was doing the BBC, just because a lot of the that early NERD and Pharrell was just, just about breaking on that same kind of way, wasn't like saying there's more than one way to do things and more than one way to approach music and more than one way to approach lifestyle. Yeah, and I think that's what, uh, what I, why I gravitated towards it. Just naturally, just the way I was born, I guess I just was always going to be this way. And I gravitated to that because it was different. And it wasn't like, it didn't sound like the other 50 artists that was making so-and-so, so-and-so black music at the time. It was intertwining all different genres. And some songs just had yells. And it wasn't about being deep and lyrical it was some stuff was telling a story, but it wasn't just a story about selling drugs or shooting people. You know, it was it was BMX bikes in a video and things like that. And like another reason, another reason why I liked Outkast, you know, around the time that I was of age to start being aware of what artists was doing, that's when Andre was slowly starting to find his his self and just looking different and dressing different and his voice sounded different and the beats and the tempos and the time signatures really attracted me because it didn't sound like the other 50 songs, other 50 artists. And I feel like Kanye West is another person like that, you know, when he came with the pink polos and he didn't have a gun. (laughs) It was cool because it's, I didn't, I never was like that. So to know it was people like that made me feel more comfortable you know, it was a safe zone. Yeah. What was the first outcast you connected with? What was the first album of theirs that you um, kind of heard? You went, oh, what, I, really, um, I really get that. Stankonia was the first one where I was, like, I knew what I liked, why I liked it. But uh, Quim and I was, uh, I remember, you know, Rosa Parks and uh, the song with Mystical off the Wood soundtrack. It was being played, like, back to back and thing. And I got the album and number five, I always liked the the song of Quim and I and the way Andre would rap. And then what he said on his first verse on Return of the G, number two on that album, was just like, y'all niggas always want to talk about this. Let's talk about time traveling. My, some mind unraveling. Get like Return of the Gangster. Thanks to the niggas that want to... Like, the, the things he was talking about was just crazy because it was... You never hear no one saying that stuff in a cool way. It's either... If they're if they're being super preachy, they're like super real hip hop underground, and they don't look cool at all. They just have lyrics, and then the opposite side of that was the you know the rap 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 stuff. Which I'm not saying either one is bad because I liked some of both, but Andre did it on a sick level. He made it cool 
he was wearing crazy pants, but making pants awesome Pants like you're music. wearing right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah, and like, just being sick. I love I love all three of those dudes. I, th- I call P my dad, and uh, Kanye is my drunk uncle. <laughs> And he's, he's always trying to prove his point, but he just be yelling. <laughs> so niggas brush him off, but I know deep down he making so much goddamn sense. And then Andre's just my cool ass fucking like, that's the cool like cousin uncle that you rarely see. But like, he always doing some weird shit like playing violin or like sewing a, a collar to an old shirt for no reason or something weird, but has so much wisdom. It's the truth. I'm talking to Tyler Creed. I just saw his new show for golfing a couple of days ago and all these things you're talking about just all these guys are these guys who all broke out of the box who all said that hip-hop wasn't just one thing and that really is what you what you felt in all those guys wasn't it i mean it's just no fucking boxes man people always put us in boxes like why does everything have to have a box why can't something just be like why does an album have to have a genre you know, and that's what I tried to do with my last album. Like, I don't... Well, we're talking about Cherry Bomb. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Like, Cherry Bomb. It doesn't have to... I mean, to go, like, for, again, to go from, from you know, Leon Ware to Roy Ayers to Christian mm-hmm. Duclos. I mean, this is, this is like, all over the place. Really. And that's the thing. It doesn't have to be super consistent with things. I, this is me. We as humans aren't consistent, you know? And that's what I wanted to prove. And people just try to keep it, like... The only, like, a lot of people complained that the only good songs was, like, specifically Two-Seater, Smuckers. They like the drum pattern to Okaga and uh, Brown Stains. And I'm like, well, those are the more, well, based off your ear, I could tell you, like, rap a lot. Just based off those songs and the drum patterns and things like that. And then they disregard the other ones and say, oh, these are whack, these are whack, blah, 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 blah. Like, why did you put this? He's losing it, but I'm not. It's just that I'm, I was curious in making other music. I wanted to try rock. And I wanted to try jazz and just see, just so I can learn. So maybe on the next one, I perfect it, but who knows? And but Smuckers has that jazz sample in it. Yeah, 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 but because we're rapping over it, and it, and then the, and the boom, dun, dun, boom, dun, dun, boom, like, there's just a slow down, so the hip-hop ear automatically gravitates towards that. Like, but, I've been studying this, like... But when I heard that, and I heard that sample from Gabrielle, and I thought, oh, my God, that's... That's a that's a jazz drum, mm-hmm. and I that's the that's that's what I love. Like, I probably kids probably sick of me saying this, but just since four, age four, certain chord progressions did something for me. Those, those are like I don't those know jazz what time signatures. You really like those, don't you? The same, and, and, and it hasn't lost. I could still listen to "Keep It Right There" by Changing Faces or Jeanne's first album, or some of the runs and, and progressions off Faith's first album and Brandy's first album, and I still get the same feeling that I got when I was four and five years old. And it's crazy that that stuck with me through time. It's crazy, like, things that you love as a child stick with you forever. But those are the formative influences. and, and But, yeah, that's what really influences me. And you said the walking paradox um, line. The reason why I said that line specifically was to set people up like yo i because boxes are specific you're either this or you're either that and if you if you're you, you it's like you can't either you can't be either one but yo i'm i i like vegan food and bacon or i like i my i love jazz and i like this too like it's it's no boxes and when i said that i meant in the sense of i know people like, but you said this but you said this like hypocrite like but I don't make sense. None of us make sense when you really think about it. And I want to set that up just so I can set people up to know that I have no boxes and no borders and no barriers. And I'm going to try stuff. No, because, again, just going back to, to Smugs, again, and I just hear a lot of, to me, jazz sig- signatures in your work. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of jazz in it. You and it's been there since day one. Like, the those notes, I like, literally every song on my first album, Bastard, has those co- bastard has those chords seven has those chords odd tyler's is a french jazz sam- sample the last verse in french i tried to bring in those chords that i love blow is an earth <laughs> earth wind and fire song yeah, and slave song i tried to copy pigs fly bridge i tried to uh bring in the piano and the yelling part in the circus is all night that's some that's like some black lip stuff that i was trying to emulate and then parade those chords and then the hook of slow it down has those notes that's and all ass like, slow it down is really all jazz really. Dude, it, like, that's, that's a big jazz thing. like people people and some people don't realize that because they only 
hear one thing, which is the rap part of it, because that's all they know. They weren't exposed to certain things, so they can't point out what certain things are. But it's funny. Which is what I want to open up to a lot of people. Like, check this out. Look at this. As we talk about this, it's so funny to me that that's as we're talking. I'm just thinking back to Pharrell. He's like a, a lot of that. That early NERD has a lot of jazz, jazz signatures in that too. Mm-hmm. And you must have really just connected. To I connected that. to it because it was all the genres I liked in one. It was. It had the it had the live rock drum sounds, but he's using jazz chords and guitar singing this beautiful R&B melody over it, then a rap verse comes, but what he's talking about is gnarly. Like, what? Provider is a fucking country song, bro. Provider is, he made a country song. And I it dawned on me, like, what the fuck? Goodbye, beloved one, do you know what I... That's a fucking country song, dude. Then it gets like a little bossa nova at the hook, I mean, at the bridge. But stuff, and even with Stankonia, like... Like my favorite Outkast song, excluding Love Below, because I just see that as an Andre solo. My favorite Outkast song is Question Mark. Why? It's number 17 on Stakonia, right. and it's because I've never heard anything like that in my life. I, I can't even beatbox the freaking beat because it's so crazy. And he's rap. He sounds like a fucking schizo. He sounds crazy, and I love it. I love all of that. And that song is only a minute and like 20 seconds long. But you and, have to, whenever you, you hear it, you have to play it over and over and over dude, again. I'm just you like, get in it. these drums are crazy. These synths, some people, and I play it for the car for people, and they're just like, what the fuck is this? And I'm like, you don't understand this? This is fucking genius. And it's all filling, dude. It's filling. That's what people don't understand. Some shit is filling. It don't need deep lyrics. Or it don't need to. It could just be. It's feeling, and that shit just feels so good. But with this again, to me, this takes us all back to jazz because so much of that is about that feeling you're talking about. It was about. just improv. They was just improv and just doing what felt right. Fuck it, if the note was wrong, it felt right. Yeah, and if it you felt amazing. But that's what everything is for you, isn't it? That kind of feeling. It's all feeling, man. If it feels right, and if if visually it looks good to me, I like it. You know. That's seeing with your heart and not your eyes sometimes, you know? And it's hard because... That's so, an SWV song. <laughs> I thought I was say, please, let's not do that. <laughs> let's not do that. But uh, so much of what you do, I first time I listen to everything you do, I listen to the music first. I mean, I just got into that, especially after Yonkers. I just kind of thought, oh, wait a second. I need to listen to, to the music now because the music is... I get the feeling for you the music is like first and foremost, isn't it? Like, yeah. Music is the most important thing of ever to me. If oxygen wasn't a thing, music would be the most important. Like, I don't go a day without music. It's all I care about. It's I study it so crucial. I love music. When I was a kid, that's all I bought. I wasn't buying toys. I was I you, what's the first music you bought? First music I purchased myself? Yeah. yeah. I remember buying Maya's first CD. I remember, uh, like, and a lot of things, like, I would get the Best Buy things and circle the CDs and tell my mom this is what I want for Christmas. I don't know if that counts. Uh, I got birthday money, and I bought Voodoo by D'Angelo and Emile LaRue from uh, Groove Theory's first album, Infinite Possibilities. Like, that was one of my favorite albums. Um, Like, I remember buying, I spent $21 on John B's uh, third album, Pleasures You Like. And my mom was so pissed. She was like, take it back. And then we went to Best Buy and got it for 14 And I saved like seven bucks. <laughs> I don't know. I've been buying music forever. Like, that's all I wanted. I just, I love going to my mom's friend's house because they had a bunch of CDs. And it was different from the ones at home. So I would just sit there and like look through them and read the credits. And what some, do you remember some of those that you just kind of saw that you like, hadn't seen them before? Like, uh, like the Waiting to Exhale soundtrack was one of them. And I was like, oh, my God, can we listen to this? Like, blah, blah, blah. And just listen to those songs that Babyface wrote. And, like, that dude's a wild man. And Babyface, one of these guys who brought, you know, who brought the acoustic guitar into R&B. Yeah, he did. So, like, his writing was crazy. That album was number one for, like, a while. Sold so many millions of copies. Had five, ten, sharp, five songs on the charts, including Not Gonna Cry by Mary and the Brandy song sitting in my room and... It's some cuts on there too. It's an SWV song on there. That's that chord progression is fucking insane. 
It's called All Night Long. I think it's number 10, if I know, I'm not name mistaken. The song. Let's let's take it. We'll take a break. We, what? We, we got to. We'll, this song we, is insane. We'll, 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 we got to take a little break. My guest, who apparently really loves Sisters with Voices, is Tyler, the creator. It's the treat for this more to come. Stay with us. The truth is sometimes elusive, but let's face it, facts are facts. You rely on KCRW and NPR to stick with the facts as the foundation of our reporting on local, national, and world events. Donate and help keep our foundation strong. Check out kcrw.com join, and thanks. Check out KCRW's music blog for song premieres, music news, performances, and KCRW DJ features. You can keep up to date on all of KCRW's music happenings at kcrw.com slash music blog. Welcome back. It's the treat. We're talking about a whole bunch of things. Fashion, music, feelings. Everything with an F. My guest is Tyler, the creator. But I want to go back to a little bit to, to that show because when you sent me the invitation, it said something I've always wanted to get from a fashion invitation, which is dress how you want, not how you think you're supposed to, mm-hmm. which is kind of the way you lead your life too, isn't it? Yeah. I I, uh, I saw some kid leave a comment on my Instagram saying, uh, uh, it's a fashion show, okay, I'm going to come in this. And he was like, I'm going to come in these shoes and my long fashion shirt and stuff. And the tone he said it in didn't sound, you know, honest. It sounded like he was only dressing like that because he thought he was supposed to, and that's how fashion is. And that's not how fashion is, dude. Fashion comes from, to me, just everyone's personal style and ideas. And then it's a whole world of that. And it bummed me out seeing him like, I'm... Oh, okay, since it's a fashion show, I need to come dress like this. Nah, dude, you don't have to. It's not a fucking uniform. This isn't a school. Like, come how you want. Let us see your personal style. I want everyone there coming how they wanted to dress. But that was it. And you actually uh, made this really interesting and passionate speech, and you were talking about and and that great song. You dropped that new song, uh, My Ego. It's just all about how you can't, be this guy who has to wear black all the time and that's not what fashion is and really fashion is who you are isn't it i mean i'm not knocking niggas wear black and stuff i wear black Just, so you know, <laughs> like black i wear black <laughs> pants all the time and i wore black suits I I'm, like, oh i'm in the wrong place <laughs> let me bounce it was just that i just hold I, I for some reason just hold that grudge like just growing up i just really liked colors and they they always would try to just get on my head about it and i'd be seeing I always see niggas just still to this day. It's big, colorful, goofy, pink wearing niggas. Like, that's what I like, bruh. You feel me? What am I wearing? <laughs> a, not a beautiful coral sweater. Because <laughs> I just thought when I saw that Good Burger poster and those clothes all came out, and I, and I just thought everything you've done, those are all Good Burger <laughs> colors to me. All those I guess pastels just, and whites and all that stuff. And I that guess once you get to know glows. me, I'm, I'm pretty, like, predictable. Like, of course I like Good Burger. It, it's satur- the movie's saturated beautifully you could watch it on mute and your eyes will just be like wow this looks nice it's funny as hell too that's one of my favorite movies because it's so stupid we we took the me and like my friends took the car to some show i don't know what band was playing and we just watched it i got tvs in the car and we just watched it on the way there and it was like still funny because it's so stupid and we love it. <laughs> Again, I'm the guy who likes Pootie Tang. So just that's just an idea of a movie that just makes yeah, you laugh. And, that's what it's, what, that's what it's there. And like be. Louis C.K. wrote that. And directed it. Yeah. And, and he's, he's been on the show talking about it. He came here to talk dude, about and it. Dude, and it's crazy because I know people that love Louis C.K. who will see that movie blind, like oblivious if he had anything to do with it and will fucking hate on it. And then if I'm like, yo, you know Louis C.K. did that. Oh, really? And then watch it. And be like, oh, <laughs> No, he came here to talk about it. He, he said, you know, listen, I'm sorry. He said, I'm sorry you liked it because he's not happy with the movie because they took it away from him. Love that movie, Louis C.K. <laughs> I met Brian Grazer, and he did a bunch of movies. And out of all the movies that he was showing me, he did. Other than American Gangster, Cat in a Hat stood out because I love that fucking movie. First, that's a great performance by Mike Myers. Yeah, he's I really love that movie. That. Yeah. And Brian Grazer was like, ah, oh, that movie, like, oh, I hate that movie, blah, blah. And I'm like, why? He was like, well, it didn't. The ratings weren't that good and didn't do well or something like that. And I'm like, bruh, just because, like, 
the whole world didn't like it doesn't mean that it's bad and that it didn't directly hit people. It, you know, because of that movie, I, I got some of my saturated style from that, being influenced by that. So just because it wasn't the biggest thing in the world doesn't mean that it didn't hit the people that it was supposed to hit. That movie, if that movie didn't exist, me being a video director probably wouldn't have been birthed, you know? So I don't, I, I don't like when something doesn't do good or up to par. People look at it as negative and don't hold that same love and feeling and passion that they have for it because the other people, you know, in the room didn't really like it. Because it's a lot of people who do that, and that bums me out so much. But I, I wanted to ask again because again because of that sample in in what we were talking about the the, uh, the sample. If if you remember the first soundtrack you bought that really connected. First with. soundtrack, um, yeah. yeah. Wayne and the Hexel is okay, one of the best soundtracks ever. I mean, like Eight Mile was a good soundtrack. Uh, Run Rabbit Run, I think that's number sixty on the album. Is such a good song. That should have been earlier. Some of the Fridays, Fridays had a good soundtrack. You know, Ice Cube really. He's one of the few people who put a lot into those soundtracks, getting you know certain songs. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have known. I'd rather be with you by Boosty Collins because it was so before my time. Of course, when I was younger and I wasn't like exploring that much. I think that's number eleven on that soundtrack or something or not. I don't know, but who else had a good soundtrack? Soundtracks used to be sick. See, cause the reason I asked you that because so so listen to like the the first mixtape you dropped. I almost felt like it was a soundtrack to me, like a soundtrack in search of a movie, kind of. Well, yeah, that's how I made all my albums. I just wanted to feel like you're watching a audio book I mean, if that makes sense you know yeah, what I'm it's, to it's like a movie yeah, for you yeah I want, you know drawn the the bridge is drawn out and comes here because it's unexpected because it seemed like that i'm more of a visual visual guy you know which isn't a bad thing just because me and my friends like movies and they're more into i have friends who's more in the dialogue and they like dialogue so important to them and dialogue is probably the least important to me in a movie. Yeah? Yeah, I'm more like, if it doesn't look good, I can't watch it. If these shots aren't sick, I don't really care. Like, that's cool that the character's developing and stuff, but that's probably second or third for me. So what are the movies that really click for you besides Cat and Hat? What else is there? Uh, Napoleon Dynamite is Again, one of them. Co- which also has those saturated colors. Yeah, too. Just, just the way that that looks just always got me. Youth and Revolt was a very sick movie. Again, colors. Every movie you talked about is kind of. Just I mean, a I'm of just a, color. a visual guy. You know, that's just me. And you know, some people are more dialogue. So the probably the guy who likes dialogue the most is probably a ridiculous writer. You know, probably really deep in the, the lyrics and things like that. Where me, I write songs based off of video ideas that I have. You know, things like that. So that's just how my brain works. Well, like I said, I've always thought that, just from hearing the very first one, this sounds like a soundtrack to a movie that he should be making right now. Mm-hmm. And every single one feels like that to me. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I base some, most of all the albums, kind of. It's just timing and what I'm into at the moment and me wanting to go to that perfect world and, and um, doing that. Because you really probably wanted to be a movie maker as much as anything else first, didn't you? Nah, it's always been music, but yeah, because it's, just thing again, going back to the, the the show the other night, that's it's it's basically it's, it's got a plot, but it all goes together. It's every every song I hear for the most part that I like, I have a video idea for it, and it's been like that since I was like six or seven. I guess that's kind of how it worked, you know. Like came up with that scene, the scenes at the, at the fashion show, I was like okay. What music do I make for this? And then I had some other stuff that was very orchestrated, very intricate, you know, Italian soundtrack stuff. But I was like, no, this needs to be simpler. I need to strip this down and just have two chords going back and forth so people could focus. Like, I get into it like that. <laughs> it's the treatment I'm talking to Tyler, the creator, who's done a few things, for a few songs you may have heard of. I'm but done. he's also, he's done a couple of things. We talked about a couple of things he's done here, but we're talking about this clothing line and that sense of, Surprising the eye, you know, you talking about the bridges coming from nowhere, which is almost like being surprised by a plot point in the movie. The movie goes this way mm-hmm. instead of that way. And the show felt like that to me, too. Yeah. I've always wanted to do a fast show. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do a golf wing fast show. Like, why not? Like, why not? It was like two years ago. I was like, okay, if I ever do one, it'll have this and this, whatever. I was just like, one day I'll do it. No rush. I'm not in a rush. And then the 
couple months ago, the maid people hit hit us up and was like, yo, we're doing this thing, blah, blah, blah. It's Fashion Week thing in L.A. We don't know who else we're going to get to do the second part, but we are really interested in Tyler. Long story short, I'm like, all right, cool, let's do it. And I started uh, trying to figure out what I was going to do for a fashion show, and literally I was in Reno. In 40 seconds, the whole idea of a fashion show came to me. I was like, hmm, I should do that. And I just stopped, sat there thinking, and then the whole thing was thought out. And then about a month ago, I started looking up other fashion shows. And uh, I just started realizing, yo, all these fashion shows look the same. It's like they get a bunch of people, and they make they sit them like this, and then the people walk out in crazy outfits, and then they walk back. The designer walks out, doesn't even bow. He just, like, nods his head and might, like, put his hand up a little bit and then walk back out, and then it's over. It's tall, skinny, fucking white people. They look uncomfortable or something stinks or... They're walking like shit. Like, you know when you really have to shit? I do Like, have. really have to shit <laughs> in any sudden move. Like, you got to slow your walk down. That's what I feel so like they're like. it's like fastness, constipation then. Dude, it's, and they're pretentious, and they don't, they look down on shit, and I don't know. They, they, they it, it's a box. They, they, you feel alienated. And when my fashion show, I was like, fuck this. I want gay kids there. I want more, I want black people there because it's not enough niggas on runways. You want non skinny people there? I, I want non skinny people. If you short, I want you tall. I want you with a fucked up hunchback. I want your limp. I want, I want, I want someone there that's fucking fifty eight years old there modeling for me. I want someone there that's ten years old modeling for me. I'm a model my shit too. Because fuck the designer coming out. I can't. Why? Why would I not model my own and shit? I make say, the clothes for me. What you say? Know? It starts with you. Exactly. It so. literally starts with you. And I was like, I don't, you know, they was trying to send me models and, you know. Oh, agencies. were they trying to make you and make like, it into a fashion show? I'm like, no, like, I know who I want. And everyone that I picked were people who I respect their energy or just their silhouette or I wanted I wanted to break their awkward factor and make them walk in front of fucking 2,000 plus people. And the thing that I saw in this <laughs> that you never see in fashion shows is people acknowledging it's you know, as they're walking past. Because mm-hmm. we're never- friends. We're having fun, man. Like, if I'm not having fun every day in my life, what am I doing? I should not stress at all. You know what I'm saying? That's not work for me. That fashion show was fun coming up. And when we up there, I told them, I don't want y'all being super serious and trying to be cool. We up there to have fun. If you fall, you fall, play it off, and let's keep it rolling. Fuck it, throw me the basketball across, and let's see if we can even make it. And if was, we miss and waiting, hit somebody, I was waiting to see that happen. It. I was waiting to see somebody get hit. Dude. When that basketball went out there, and then when they start, when you have the, the board ramps out there, mm-hmm. and they start somebody that board's going to the nah, audience. Man, it's the, all the energy was good. Everyone was excited, and we was having fun, and that felt like a rehearsal for us. We didn't even realize what we were doing. It felt like a rehearsal, and it was awesome. And everyone that I picked, it was like. It was like the people I wish I, I had around me in high school. Just It was like the perfect 13 people from different backgrounds and sizes and, and the different things. But we all had a common thread. We were all fucking cool as shit. And we looked sick as fuck on that runway. You see little Alex? the little That nigga walk? What? Oh, my God. And then the bald girl with her gap tooth, bruh. She's sick. I had to represent for niggas with gap teeth. <laughs> I see why. <laughs> but I guess what I thought about, too, was, again, it had, like, a beginning, a middle, and an end, you know? I mean, oh, yeah, like and that. then I was like, I was like, well, dude, I don't, like, I make so much stuff. Like, it's bigger than just a T-shirt. I make I make golf balls, and I'm gonna actually start making golf stuff and cardigans. Yeah. There's, like, a whole golf sort of little plot in yeah, the entire and fashion I'm show. like, damn, the, the cardigan, I made, a, I made, like, some other stuff for the older dudes who don't want to wear all the crazy all-over print stuff. So I was like, okay, I got to figure out a way how to get to show their stuff. I'm going to get an older model. But then I, I love when older I love when older women wear, like, the scarves and the glasses with the pearls, but they're in a suit, and it's like... So I was like, I'm going to make that, too. But I want them to model for it, too. But I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out a segment for them. But, damn, I want to show the bedding that I make, and I want to show people the chairs and the... This, 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 yeah, because uh, it starts off with you, closet it starts with you in, in bed. Exactly. With the bedding, yeah. And, that's that's how I figured out how to. Uh, th- that's the way I figured out how to show everything that I make. Because it basically, it almost feels like it takes place over the, a day. You know, it starts yeah. with you in, in, mm-hmm. in and bed. it was yeah, it was a little more too. Even the dice, like I made dice. 
you know. Th- so you, those, you made those dice? That yeah, the stage? dice, the yellow dice we were using, I made those. So I was like, let's have a dice game on stage. And then that way I could come out in my chains and my jeans, short, sagging, shoes with no socks, white tee. And then, like, I could have my boy come out in the basketball short sagging with the flip-flops. And, like, I could show the bag where we keeping all the money at. Like, I, I wanted to figure out different ways to show stuff. Because, again, I don't want to keep it in a box. It's a hood nigga in that audience who relates to playing CeeLo having a stack of, of money like that sagging. And he can't relate to the skinny little little gay white kid in the, in the, in the, in the pink polo and the trench coat. You know what I'm saying? But then again, it's someone in the audience that can't relate to the dice game. So I, I and then it's a, it's someone's parent out there that can't relate to that. But when he saw Thurnus in the cardigan and the pants actually playing golf, golf yeah. and that hat that you won't see no sixteen year old in, but you'll see a fifty year old man in, he was like, "Oh, snaps! Like, I got that too." And then it's people there who don't care about clothes but might love furniture and might respect the fact that I saw a coke can one day and decided to make a chair from it or. I took my tech deck and made it 18 times bigger and turned, to a and table. turned it into a table to put my books in and and saw a, a coffee mug and said, that should be a sink and made that. So I, like I said, it all comes from no rules. It's no, it's no boxes. It's no borders. It's no ceiling. I'm going for it. And it's also too, just about you creating like an environment too. It's not just about the clothes. I mean, it's a world, you know? Come to my world. This is what we doing over here. I like flowers. We got we like dirt bikes. It's chaos, but it's beautiful. That's why I forgot there are dirt bikes on stage too. I can't, I was, I, at a certain point, it sounds like you're waiting for, almost waiting for something to go wrong. The the bike's gonna go off. It's all the chaos, basketball. but it's good energy. Yeah, like you know, I I wanted to make I wanted to make dirt bikes that match all the clothes you saw. I made the glitter dirt bike. People didn't even notice, but that's the same shirt that I wore at the end of the show. And I just, How could you not notice the dirt well, bikes yeah. on the shirts were glowing? They, Come yeah, on they now, full on notice. Trust me, I'm nobody, an idiot. <laughs> nobody missed that one. <laughs> but, thought it was nuanced. They, <laughs> trust me, everybody got that. <laughs> but that—that's the thing that, that, again, for me, I thought, oh, this is what I've been hearing all these years. All these albums that sounded like soundtracks, I now see in a way that I had in the videos. Mm-hmm. Just seeing that show, I thought, oh, this is like a, a this is a movie. Yeah, that's how it is. Every song or every sound is towards a scene and a mood. And that's the thing. That's why Cherry Bottom's my favorite because every song is a different part of the day. Like, I don't want to sit in one room all day. You know, people love... It's not consistent. It's not, you know, it's... But is your day consistent? When you Is brushing your teeth the exact same as when you're driving your car? You know, or paying food to eat? Like, that's why that the album's so many different moods. But it goes throughout the course of just trying to get to a movie theater, and that's why I love it because that's how life is. It's up and downs and roller coasters. It's the thing I've always wanted to ask you because I haven't known you that long, but and I'm just doing this research. Nobody ever mentioned that these all things all feel like soundtracks to you, but they always have to me. And I've always wanted to ask you about that, mm-hmm. and just it makes all the sense in the world now that you, that you said that, dude. Like like blow my load. That song literally sounds like '80s sex R and B to me. And when I made that beat, I was like, okay, that's that's what I'm gonna write about. And I'm gonna paint a picture of every everything. Even and I wanted it to sound kinda corny too. It because does. that's <laughs> what those eighties R and B records sounded like. Like that stuff Steve Arrington was doing when he left Slave and what Cameo was doing. Even though like some of the even though they're great written songs, some of them was corny, but it's cause they were straight to the point and very very sexual, which is something that like people are still weird to talk about. And I was like, I want to get that. I want Wanye from Boys to Man to just hit a bunch of runs throughout the whole song. And then I want to end it with like a beautiful ending at the end. And that sounds like that weird 10 minute sex scene in a movie. And then two seater sounds like just driving my car during sunset, getting home in LA. That's what it sounds like to me. And you know, I think when some people understand where I'm coming from with that, they might look at it different. Even if they don't like it, they'll be like, okay, I understand why that was made. But no, I'm happy I had a chance to talk to you about this, and I'm sorry we're out of time. You can come back here anytime you want. Okay. My guest is Tyler Cray. We talk about all kinds of stuff. He has clothes and music and everything. Let me thank uh, Tyler again for doing this and again. No, it's you sick. Back. I You're cool. And I meant to, it's not, it's rare to meet cool older black guys. <laughs> 
And I'm serious. It seems like a lot of the older black guys hate on the younger guys because we may be doing it different than they're doing it. Or, you know, and it's rare to meet people like you who not even open with the things that my, me and my guys do, but even with movies, you might like the most prestigious and blah, blah, blah movie and still could appreciate Pootie Tang for what it is. And it's not a lot of people who have an open palette like that. Well, again, anytime you want to come back, you're welcome. I guess it's Tyler Cray. We talk about all kinds of stuff. He has clothes and music and everything. So let me thank <laughs> our recording engineer here at NPR West, Patrick Murray. The show is mixed by Kat Yori. It's edited by Blake Butters, associate producer. And as for me, I'm the guy who likes Pop-Tarts without frosting. It's the that treatment. That is fucking weird! <laughs> Catch up on past episodes of the treatment, go to KCRW.com or listen on your smartphone with KCRW's mobile apps or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or if you listen to podcasts. The treatment is produced and distributed by KCRW Santa Monica. That don't need to-